Let me tell you something. When Togo needs rocks, you get them rocks. Welcome to Thrifty 30. Well, and also safety first. You need to make sure that if you're destroying a monument, you have a helmet. But yes, welcome to Togrog Tank. Hope you're excited. We, we've got a fun deck to talk about. If you've never built Voltron, um, if you've never built Mono Red, just goofiness, this is the deck for you. So let's go and talk about our partner commanders, and that is going to be Rog. We have zero converted mana cost, um, First Strike, Menace, and Trample. Now, if you've never built Voltron, one of the things that you're always looking for in your early game creatures is just having keywords, because you're going to try to really boost that power and toughness by using different pieces of equipment. So simply being able to have First Strike, Menace, and Trample on a free creature, um, that is exactly what you want to be doing in a Voltron deck. Now with Togo, this is one of the ways that we can really kind of power up that power and toughness or really just end up with just kind of a crazy board state. Um, so with Togo, whenever a land enters the battlefield, uh, we're going to be able to create a rock token. This rock token has one um, tap, sacrifice it, deals two damage to any target, then has a quip for one. So, there will be some times, you know, if you're playing Voltron, you're trying to get as much power and toughness going on to one creature, swing in, deal a lot of damage. Um, there may be some times to where the board state is just not ready for you to swing in. You can't swing past X amount of creatures. Um, simply being able to equip these equipment onto your creatures and throw the rocks at your opponent, the quote unquote throw the rocks but um, it's a wonderful way to play the deck especially if you get stalled out and you can't swing in it just adds that nice little extra benefit and plus you get to imagine togo throwing rocks at your opponent it's a lot of fun now why these two commanders and that's going to revolve around golem skin gauntlets this is a beautiful equipment card um, equip creature gets plus one for each equipment attached to it so one of the cool things about tog is that uh, excuse me with rog is that rog has first strike so we get golem skin gauntlets on there we just keep making our land drops we put those rock tokens onto rog um, that's really going to power it out and the fact that it does have first strike that's really going to allow you to end up with some sort of creature that's going to be hard to block and push that damage through um, they're gonna have to throw the whole kitchen sink at Rog um, by the time you get all that equipment on there. Um, outside of Golem uh, skin gauntlets, we do have some other really good pieces of equipment in the deck. Uh, we've got Blackblade Reforge, Fire Shrieker, Loxodon Warhammer. What you're really looking for in these equipment is some sort of threat, you know, double strike, you know, trample lifelink plus three. Just being able to put these onto your creatures, swing in, either force your opponent to block and get rid of some creatures, or you just get in for commander damage, gain some life on the same time. You really just want to pump up that power and toughness on whatever sort of creature that you are swinging in. And of course, some of your value equipment, you know, stuff like Haunted Cloak and Wings of hu Hubris. Um, this is going to give you flying. Let's say that you can't swing in on the ground. You can simply get this equipped on there, sacrifice it. That's going to give your creature flying. And then with Cloak, um, that's going to give you Vigilance, Trample, and Haste. So that's going to allow you to swing in and at the same time keep your first strike. You know, let's say we have Rog. We have Cloak on Rog. Um, being able to swing in, go for that commander damage, then have a blocker on the back end. That's really going to help you hopefully stabilize. Now, outside of equipment, one of the things that you definitely want to run in a Voltron deck is running some sort of Voltron backup. Goblin Gavalier, um, Champion of the Flame, Fervent Champion. These are all wonderful options either early game or late game. You know, let's say that you are trying to go with one sort of Voltron threat. It gets hit with a piece of removal. Um, having a cheap option to get down and get some sort of bonus with the extra equipment on it is really what you want to do. With Goblin Gavalier, you're going to get plus two for each equipment attached to it. Um, Champion's going to get plus two, plus two for each equipment to it. And then with Fervent Champion, this is going to be one of those. It's not going to get the bonus from rocks and different things like that. But having that equip cost of three or less for basically free, um, you get down Fervent, it has haste, it has first strike. You're going to immediately be able to throw most of your equipment onto Fervent and it's really going to allow you to rebound from some sort of spot removal. But these creatures right here, you know, it's great to get Rog on the battlefield. Let's say we get the Golem Skin Gauntlets on there. These are the creatures that are going to take advantage of the rocks. You know, let's say that we can't get rocks on there. We can't get that power and toughness bonus onto Rog. Um, being able to simply just equip them on there and get a plus two, plus zero, or plus two, plus two, um, that is exactly what you're going to do because you just want to have some sort of thi uh, sizable threat uh, to threaten your opponent. Now, outside of these, we also have some wonderful options in Voltron. Uh, that's going to be Toll Collector and Armory Automaton. 
Um, with Toll Collector, you're going to be able to attach your equipment for free. You have a zero activated ability. Um, just like Fervent Champion, you're going to have the option of getting that down, immediately throwing a bunch of stuff on there, and start swinging in at your opponent. With Armory Automaton, this is a wonderful card. Enters the battlefield or attacks, you may attach any number of target equipment to it. Now it says any number of target equipment, so that includes your opponent's equipment on the table, includes your equipment. Um, a lot of the things that kind of make Voltron really hard is that you have to spend the mana to get the creature down and spend that mana to get the equipment equipped onto that creature. So with stuff like Toll Collector and Armory Automaton, this is going to allow you to very cheaply or even freely uh, make an immediate Voltron threat and start swinging in. You know, just having some sort of option to rebound from some spot removal or board wipe that's good but also armory automaton you get to steal your opponent's stuff now they can re-equip it to one of their own creatures but uh, for that moment in time you get to get all the equipment at the table um, outside of these options you just want to run some sort of beater options we've got dark steel juggernaut indestructible it's going to attack every single turn so that's really not going to matter but it's going to be equal to the number of artifacts that you control on the battlefield so let's once again if we have a lot of rocks on the battlefield, we can't take advantage of those rocks. Um, something like Dark Steel Juggernaut, still going to get the bonus from those rocks, but at the same time, really start swinging into your opponent. Um, same thing with Mirror Adapter, it's going to get plus one, plus one for each piece, uh, piece of equipment attached to it. And then with Traxos, you know, you're going to be casting a lot of artifacts. It's a 7-7 seven, seven for four only, and you have a lot of historic spells in your deck. So um, there may be some times to where you simply just swing in with Traxos. Um, you know, let's say that you need to take care of a Planeswalker or something like like that uh, Traxo swinging in as a 7-7 trample uh, will definitely get the job done now outside of the backup Voltron pieces we want to run some sort of extra value that's going to take advantage of all these rocks entering the battlefield um, reckless fire weaver enters the battlefield it's going to deal one damage to each opponent so like I said, let's say you have a board state where you really can't swing in and really can't get that damage through. Uh, simply being able to have these artifacts enter the battlefield, deal that one damage to each opponent, that's really going to add up as the course of the game goes on. Um, Gear Poor Aether Grid, this is a wonderful option. Tap down those equipment. You know, once you put a piece of equipment onto a creature, you can use that for improvise. You can use it to tap down something like Aether Grid. It doesn't affect the ability that it's giving that creature. So, something like Gear Poor Aether Grid is a wonderful addition to the stack. It's really going to help you kind of pound that damage out and also kind of go for some spot removal and with Quicksmith Genius This is going to allow you to kind of get that card filtering if you've never played mono red aggressive mono red Voltron um, You want to be super aggressive with your card advantage you, you want to discard cards that you know that you can't use for the next three turns Use that Quicksmith Genius to kind of start cycling through your deck find some different stuff uh, Make sure that you're making the land drop and once you you know just the fact of getting a land drop getting a token, and then getting the Quicksmith Genius trigger to go on the stack. That is very good. Now, this brings us to Commanders C and D. I forget, it's A, B, but yeah, Commanders C and D for the deck. And that's going to be Valduk and Krinko. Um, if you've never played with Valduk, this is a wonderful commander. It's one of my favorite mono red commanders. At the beginning of combat, we're going to be able to create a 3-1 elemental with haste for each equipment that's attached to Valduk. This is the perfect Voltron commander that you don't have to swing in with. You know, there will be some times where you end up with a beautiful Voltron commander, but, you know, you may swing into a state that's going to lose the creature. Um, one of the best things about Valduk is that you're going to be able to get those elementals without swinging in. It's just a combat trigger, uh, combat step trigger. So that's a beautiful thing to have. Um, like I mentioned, you know, if we end up with a bunch of rocks on the battlefield, we don't have those gauntlets. Um, simply dumping all the rocks onto Valduk is really going to end up with a, uh, you know, you're going to be able to threaten the board state. You know, let's say you get five or six of these on the battlefield, five or six, three, one elementals. Um, it's really hard to deal with sometimes from your opponent's perspective. And then also with Krinko, um, this is kind of, you know, Commander D for the deck. We can get a lot of power and toughness going on it. Um, we're going to be able to create the uh, number of goblin tokens equal to its power. Um, this is one of those that if we can make it work, if we can get those extra goblins going, awesome. And then just the thought of like... <laughs> You know, all the, the goblins in the back of Krinko's art, uh, just simply getting the goblin tokens out there on the battlefield, equipping a rock to each one that's going to give you that option to deal that two damage um, to your opponents. Um, we're also running Burning Prophet, Goblin Engineer, and Firebrand Archer. Um, with Burning Prophet and Firebrand Archer, these are going to give you those non-creature spell triggers. You, know, you want to get as much value as possible out of a budget deck. Um, that's going to be one damage for each opponent whenever you cast a non-creature spell. And then with Burning Prophet, that's going to act like a little bit of card advantage. You know, we're gonna get that scry for one then we do get that plus one plus zero so burning profit 
actually pretty good for the deck. You know, you're gonna get that card filtering a little bit with Scryfall and uh, with Scry, and at the same time you get plus one, plus zero. Shout out to Scryfall, I love them. And also with Goblin Engineer, pretty much with Goblin Engineer, that's what you're going for. Um, get that down, search up Golem Skin Gauntlets, put it in the graveyard, sacrifice a rock, boom. I need to check with Fibblethip. Fibblethip, are we, yes, okay, we are officially connected to magic christmas lane so let's go and get magic christmas lane growing so we have rog um salivating gremlins reckless fire weaver togo and valduke let's say that rog has golem skin gauntlets we've been talking about that and then four rocks already attached to it so that's going to make rog right off the bat um plus five plus zero first strike menace and trample that is a wonderful voltron threat we can put more stuff on there but for magic christmas land um that is going to be it for right now um let's say that salivating gremlins has fire streaker on it and valduke has has one rock attached to it so what are we gonna do let's showcase what this deck is capable of let's say that we play evolving wilds so when we play evolving wilds let's say that we crack it we get that mountain on the battlefield that is gonna be two Togo triggers. It's going to be two rock triggers. Now, when those rocks enter the battlefield, we have those two rocks. It's also going to trigger Salivating Gremlins and Reckless Fire Weaver. So we're going to have two triggers for the Gremlin to get plus two, plus zero, plus two, plus zero. So now you're looking at Salivating Gremlins with plus four. So we're looking at a six, three double strike with Fire Streaker. Oh, look at that. Uh, Reckless Fire Weaver, those two triggers, those can be two damage to your opponents that you get to deal out. All right, so after that, that's just kind of showcasing what is possible with when the artifact or an equipment enters the battlefield. So we have these two rocks. Let's go and equip these two rocks onto Valduke. That's going to be three. Let's say that we go to the combat step. That's going to be three elementals that pop out during combat. So you can see where you end up with this thriving board state that cares about equipment entering the battlefield. You have these enter the battlefield effects that take advantage of that. Um, also, you know, we could have put these rock tokens onto Rog, but, you know, let's say that the board state's not good for Rog or we really want to diversify our risk out there or our threats out there so simply being able to put these rocks in a Valdu, get those elementals going there will be the salivating gremlin swinging in you can see that this is the board state that you want to assemble some sort of just weird value where you have multiple pieces you can swing in at one opponent that maybe has a planeswalker out there or if you need to push in commander damage you can put them onto rog um, whatever that is you're going to end up with a ton of fun stuff like this Now, moving on to upgrades. As far as the upgrades for the deck, you know, if you're a commander player, you probably have some of these cards already. These are going to be immediate upgrades that you want to get into your deck. Um, the first tier that I would start is making sure that you upgrade the mana for this deck, the extra mana. It's really important that you have access to stuff like Soul Rune, Arcane Signet, um, Guild of Lotus, Three and Dynamo. You want to have efficient mana rocks that allow you to get ahead on mana and quickly dump stuff out of your hand and really kind of establish that board state. Um, and really, you know, looking at these mana rocks that are not that expensive, it's simply just, you know, there's only so much you can put into a budget deck. So if you're any sort of commander player, you probably already have these. You're going to be immediately be able to kind of really ramp up uh, the mana rocks for the deck. Um, the other tier that I would look at outside of the mana rocks after that uh, would be just kind of pumping up some of the equipment in there. S something like Sword of Feast and Famine is worth its weight in gold in a deck like this you're gonna have protection from green and black which is a really good thing to have that's gonna be a lot of your creature removal spells and your uh, artifact removal spells and also the good thing with sword of feast and fame it's gonna force your opponent to discard a card and you get to untap your land so that allows you to do some stuff on the back end um, outside of that one of the things about a Voltron deck like this is you don't want to get super high on the mana cost of the equipment and super high on the equip cost of that equipment because if it's too high it may may be hard for you to assemble any sort of value in one turn. So if you're going to be adding extra equipment, you know, it may sound good to put in five different swords of blank and blank in there, but it, it's a little clunky. There's nothing wrong with running some of the cheaper equipment. Um, sometimes you simply just need that equipment on that creature. So definitely keep that in mind. But um, outside of sword, sword of Feast and Famine, you just really want to upgrade the protection package, you know, Swiftfoot boots, lightning greaves, different things like that. And the last package, you know, you can do extra combat step stuff. Um, you want to go, you want to tread lightly on this. If you have so many of these extra combat step stuff in here, um, it's kind of clunky sometimes. You know, you maybe want to pick out two or three of them. That way, 
you're not always seeing it in your hand because you're not always going to have this beautiful board state where you know sees the day is going to work out but if it does you still want to have it in the deck to where you know maybe you can draw into it you can tutor for it or something like that um, but that would definitely be another way that you can really kick it up and a lot of these cards aren't super expensive you know it's just taking up you know five ten percent of the deck cost and that's kind of you got to make some cuts somewhere but um that's going to be it for the deck and um, that is the upgrades if you want to check out some of these tokens that are popping up i made these tokens if you want to use them for the deck they are available down below in the description um, these are free to print and not for sale this is wizard of the coast art wizard of the coast owns these intellectual property um, this is simply just created under the fair fan use policy so if you want to print them out cut them out one of the best ways to make your own tokens is print them out at home, uh, cut them out, um, put them in a card sleeve, and then slide the paper in front of just a random card, whether it's a land or a basic, it, you know, some draft, something that, a card that you don't care about. Um, simply being able to cut these out and slide them in between, uh, you're going to be set with all the tokens for the deck. But if you've never built Voltron, if you've never built Voltron, highly recommend checking this deck out it's a lot of fun there's going to be a lot of interesting lines of play that you can go for um, this is definitely not a win percentage deck you're not going to care about how often you win because the fun is going to be building that board state you know there may be some games where you have Valduke down you end up getting all the rocks on him that's going to be a lot of uh, elemental tokens on the battlefield there may be some times where you have the perfect draw to where you end up with this super crazy rock very early on anyway have fun and if you enjoyed the video hey like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.